Okay, so we need to find the volume of both the cylinder and the cone and then add those volumes together. Volume of a cylinder is capital B times H. Capital B is area of the base. So volume of the cylinder, area of the base, times height. And then for a cone, volume is one third, area of the base, times height. Um, the way I'm saying this area of the base is important. Um, it's the area of this circle, the base. Um, the area of a circle is pi r squared. If you didn't remember that, it's on here. Circle, area, pi r squared. So you actually have to plug that in for the capital B. So volume equals pi r squared times the height. Same for the cone. The base is a circle, pi r squared times the height. It says to use 3.14 for pi, so we're going to plug that in. Volume equals 3.14. The radius would be half of the 30, which would be 15. And then the height of the cylinder part is 20. Solving this, use order of operation. So 15 squared is 225 times 20 times 3.14. Multiply those three numbers, and it comes out to 14130 feet cubed. So that's the volume of the cylinder piece. Okay, and then for the cone, volume equals one-third. Pi is 3.14. The radius of this cone, the same as the cylinder, which is 15 squared. And then the height of the cone, it shows the height of the whole shape is 35. This part's 20. So 35 minus 20 is 15. So we got 15 here. And then solving this, make sure to use order of operations. 15 squared is 225. And then in the calculator, 1 third times 3.14 times 225 times 15 equals this number. Why is it doing it on this screen? I want it over here. Sorry. Okay, where's the mouse again? Do you see it? Okay. Oh, there it is. Yeah, I was trying to get this over here. I was trying to show you, um, I showed you yesterday. Okay, so where people sometimes get stuck is with this equation right here. Um, if you are second guessing yourself in any way, um, just use the EOC calculator. It'll make it a whole lot easier, and you don't have to worry about like order of operations or making errors in the same way. So you can type it in like this. Gosh, that screen's not working seriously. Okay, one third. You can type this all in. Three point one four. Oh gosh, I just need to like start over. Sorry, this is taking so long. Okay, I'm gonna stop doing this in a second. Three point one four and then the radius was 15 squared and then the height was 15. So you can put in the whole thing um, and it just gets out the answer so that way you don't have to worry about order of operations or how to put the fraction in or anything like that and it makes it a little bit easier. Okay. Okay next it says um Hannah oh and then the next step, once you add the volume of each of these, is to add those volumes together. So you add this plus this, and that comes out to 17662.5 feet cubed. It's B. Next, it says Hannah cut a quadrilateral from a piece of cardboard with the diagonals having the following characteristics, um, congruent, perpendicular, and bisect each other. Which type of quadrilateral must Hannah have cut out? Okay, so I'm going to look at the answer choices and just trying to draw them. So you have parallelogram, 
rectangle, rhombus, all the sides equal, and it's also parallelogram, and square would look like this. Okay, and it's talking about the diagonals of that shape, so I'm going to just draw the diagonals so I can visually see them and what they would look like. Okay, there's the diagonals. So it says the shape has the diagonals are congruent. So looking at this, this diagonal is longer than this one, so the diagonals here for the parallelogram, not congruent. Rectangle, the diagonals are congruent, so it could be a rectangle still. A rhombus, the diagonals are not congruent. This is longer and this is shorter, so not a rhombus. Cross that out. Um, and then in a square, the diagonals are congruent. We can see that there. Um, the diagonals are perpendicular. We can see in the rectangle, those diagonals don't form a 90 degree angle, so not a rectangle. But in a square, they do form a 90 degree angle. So the answer is square. And bisect each other, yes, they bisect each other like this. Okay. Okay, and then the next one, it says, what is the contrapositive of the statement below? So in this statement, it has hypothesis and conclusion, P, then Q. Um, and then you have to memorize this. This won't be on any reference sheet, but they will ask about it on the EOC. So the conditional is P, then Q. Converse is Q, then P. Inverse is not P, then not Q. And then contrapositive, not Q, then not P. So we're doing not Q, so not this part of the statement, then not this part. So it says if a triangle is isosceles, then it has two congruent sides. So if a triangle does not have two congruent sides, so I did not Q, then triangle is not isosceles, so not P. I didn't look at the answer choices because I didn't want it to confuse me or make me second guess myself. So now that I have the answer, I'm just going to match it to the answer choices. If a triangle does not have congruent sides, then it's not isosceles. It happens to be the first answer. No. So the EOC is like 30% or 33% of your overall grade. But if you fail the EOC, you don't necessarily fail the whole year, only if your grades like low. Okay. But honestly, probably won't fail it. So, yeah. Anyway, you've been working too hard to fail it. There's no way unless you just like give up on yourself. Okay. The lot of a building supply store is in the shape of a trapezoid as shown below. The broken line represents the fence used to divide the lot into two parts. What is the length to the nearest whole foot of the fence that divides the lot? Okay, so we need to find the length of this. So this is our X. And the only way to find this length is to use trigonometry. So we're going to use Sokotoa. And so we have the designated angle right here, and then the two sides that are labeled, we have our hypotenuse and our adjacent side, and then opposite doesn't have anything there, so we don't label that. And then, so A and H, we're going to use cosine. So the way we'd set this up is cosine of 35 degrees equals adjacent over hypotenuse, 170 over X. And from here, multiply this by x, just takes a second to get it set up right. And then from here, divide this by cosine of 35, cosine of 35, and x equals 170 over cosine of 35. Then in the calculator, 170 divided by 35 cosine equals this number. So again, I get it did 170 divided by 35 cosine equals 207.53. So that'd be 208. 
So if you're second guessing yourself about how to put this in the calculator, you could always use the EOC calculator and just put it in exactly like that and you wouldn't second guess yourself. And then if you get an error or like a negative number, it might be because you're in radians instead of degrees. So make sure that you're in degrees. Okay, the next one, using the figure below, what is the measurement of BAC? So identify the angle BAC, BAC, so it would be this angle right here. Um, I see a triangle here, so if I just find this angle, I can do 180 minus these two to find this angle. So these two form a linear pair, so they're supplementary, so I can do 180 minus 115 to find this angle, and that would be 65 degrees. And then to find this angle, I can use the angles of a triangle. So the angles of a triangle add to 180. So 180 minus 53 minus 65, and I get 62 degrees. Okay, next. Over here, um, this is so common on both the EOC and SATs as well. They want us to find the area of just the shaded part. So what we're going to have to do is find the area of the big circle, subtract the area of the small circle, and then that will equal just the shaded part. So area of a circle, if you don't know it off the top of your head, area equals pi r squared. Area equals pi r squared. It says to use 3.14 for pi, so area equals 3.14. The big circle has a radius of 6. And then for the small one, it has a radius of 3. Then from here, follow the order of operations, you have to square the 6 first, we get 36 times 3.14, which comes out to 113.04 inches squared. And then the area here, 3 squared is 9, 3.14 times 9 is 28.26 inches squared. And then the last step is to subtract these two to find just the shaded part. So 113.04 minus 28.26 equals 84.78, and that is the shaded part. Okay. okay, the next one, it says the net in the figure below can be folded into which of the following three-dimensional solids? Um, so we're trying to figure out which 3D shape. Um, just reviewing the shapes that are listed here, a triangular prism would have a triangular face like there and here, um, and then I'd have rectangles that go all the way around. A rectangular prism would be kind of like a tissue box, and then a triangular pyramid would have a triangle base, and then triangles that go all the way around, and then a square pyramid would have a square base, and then triangles that go around, all the way around. So the square pyramid, the net would look like this. Okay, so based on that, what we have here is a triangular prism. So we have the front triangle and the back triangle and then rectangles that go all the way around it. So like if you were to fold it up. Yeah. So I would see it like this and it has kind of like a square. Wait, anyways, this is not the greatest drawing. Anyways. Okay. Okay, the next question, it says two tetrahedra. 
Wait a second, what's a tetrahedra? I know, I'm just going to look it up on Google so I can show you. Okay, so a tetrahedra looks like this. It is um, like a pyramid, and it has four faces. It has um, all equal triangles or like congruent triangles. So there's like a triangle on the bottom, and then there's three triangles that go all the way around. And that's a tetrahedra. It has four faces, and then they're all triangles to make that shape. That shape's still not working. Okay, so tetrahedra looks, it says there's two tetrahedron that are congruent. One tetrahedron is glued to the other so that the glued faces of the two tetrahedra completely cover each other, producing a new polyhedron. How many faces does a new polyhedron have? Okay, so I'm trying to draw the tetrahedron. It has a triangle on the bottom, then three triangles that go all the way around. And there's a second one where it's like matching up a face. So there's one up here and one down here. So this part would have three faces. And then this part would have three faces. So therefore, the whole thing has six faces total. Okay, next page. Okay, it says if PQRS is a rhombus, which statement must be true? So in a rhombus, all the sides are equal. Um, the diagonals are perpendicular. Also, opposite sides are parallel. So looking at this, it says PSR is a right angle. PSR. Um, no, that's not a 90 degree angle. Nope. PR is congruent to QS. PR is congruent to QS. No, PR is longer than QS. No. Angle PQR is congruent to QRS. No, they're supplementary. They are not congruent, or we can't prove they're congruent. And then last but not least, PQ is equal to QR. Um, yes, by definition, rhombuses have equal sides. Rhombus, rhombi have congruent sides. Next question, the measure of each exterior angle of a regular polygon is 45 degrees. How many sides does the polygon have? Um, exterior angles of a convex polygon equal 360 degrees. So we can take 360 degrees, divide by 45, and that will tell us how many angles the shape has. So 360 divided by 45 is eight angles. The number of angles a shape has is the same as the number of sides. So um, it says eight, it's an octagon. And the last one we're doing together right now, it says given that K is parallel to M and N, so this line is parallel to this line and is parallel to this line, um, which statement justifies the conclusion that one is congruent to two and congruent to three, and it shows these angles here. Um, those angles are corresponding angles. And if lines are parallel, then corresponding angles are congruent. So that means, that's what I'm looking for. This is alternate interior angles, nope. Vertical angles, nope. Alternate exterior, nope. Corresponding angles right here for answer D. Okay, and that is all. So what I want you to do, I don't know, I'm talking with a weird accent, um, is homework number three on Schoology and use a video to fill in the next 10, 54 to 63. I'd recommend doing the homework first so that way you can ask questions and then use the video for the next 10. So, ready, set, go. You can grab a laptop and all that. Remember to grab your numbered laptop too. I will be a